Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Cornerstone Quick Tips. Actually, today's video is sort of a mashup between Personify and Cornerstone Quick Tips because it leverages something that I discovered when looking through the Personify templates and have now started using in all of my future builds. What is it you ask? Well, it's self-looping parameter elements, or at least that's what I'm calling it because I can't think of a better name. So what does that mean and how does it work? Well, here you'll notice that we're looking at your average slider, but this really isn't your average slider. This is the slider element with custom parameters for the Muse Personify template. And what's really nice about this is if you've ever dealt with a slider where you needed multiple slides that each followed the same design, or maybe columns or containers where you're creating lists that all follow the same design, you know it can be tedious to just duplicate columns or duplicate slides to make things work. Now, a good solution to this is to create a custom post type for something like testimonials and create a slider and then design a single slide and have that slide consume your custom post type and display everything like you see it here and it's very consistent and if we decide that a headline needs to be larger we simply change it in the one slide that we have designed that's consuming the data and it changes across the board and the same is true in something like this here where we have columns set up and we have testimonials inside of that if we wanted to make a change to how these testimonials look it could be tedious to make multiple changes but because we're using a looper, if we change the text size to two M's, it's going to change across the board, as you see there. So how does this work? Well, if we click on this slider, let's take a look at how the Personify testimonial slider is built. You'll notice that it has these parameters here for each of the testimonials or each of the slides, but these contain just data. So if we click on Alicia here, we'll see that there's a highlight, there's a quote, there's a headshot and a citation. So how is this working and how could this be beneficial? Well, let's take a look at what's going on under the hood here. First, if I select this slide here and we jump over to customize, you'll notice that our looper provider is actually the parameter list from the top level of the element and then that is being consumed, meaning we are now looping over this here so if we need to add another testimonial we simply add another testimonial in that's right here we could type in something here and we'll notice that updated directly in our list and then we could even add a headshot and insert that into our data here and that is automatically being piped in directly into our slider so how could this be useful and how do we go about actually setting something like this up well let's jump into our sandbox here and here i want to include a testimonial slider right here in section two so what i'm actually going to do is turn this into a component because we may want to use this in multiple places so we're going to jump into our components here we'll create a new component library we'll call this composed components and then within here let's go ahead and create our slider we're going to just use a standard slider inline element, something like this here, and this is what's going to contain our testimonials. Now, we're not going to get into a bunch of styling here, but let's go ahead and just get rid of all of our different slides. Now, like I mentioned, if you're like me, you'll typically set up a custom post type, you'll put the data into the custom post type, and then you'll loop over that data to create something like a testimonial slider. And that certainly works, and you can certainly continue doing that. But in some instances, that can be overkill for simple data that you just want to list out, but don't want your clients or yourself dealing with each of the individual slides or even individual columns or cells in a grid, whatever it may be. Now, how do we go about setting this up? Well, it's gonna look a little bit complex, but I promise you this is actually super simple. So we are going to go ahead and click on whatever we want the parent container of our slider to be. In this case, I'm just gonna use the slider inline div that we have here. Now, I'm gonna come up to our manage element and click on edit parameters. And in here, I'm gonna do my curly brackets to initially create our document. And I'm actually gonna slide this over so you can see the parameters being created over here as we are working on them. Now, for the sake of this example, I'm gonna give this very simple names. We'll go ahead and just call this slider items and the quote colon and open our brackets and immediately you'll notice over here we now have parameters created there's not going to be much in there but we have those parameters created so now we can begin adding a little bit of additional context to what these parameters are so let's go ahead and specify that slider items is going to be the name of our group so we'll call this type colon group and we'll add brackets then we'll jump down a line and we'll give this the label of slides and then we can start adding our parameters inside of this group. So we're going to say params and then we'll open up our brackets and now we can begin defining those. So let's start by typing something like our quote, which is going to be our first parameter. And that quote is going to be a text area. So we'll type in text area and it's going to have the label of quote. So let's do that. 
And now you'll notice on the left hand side here, things are starting to come together. If, if I actually add one of these grouped parameters here, you'll notice I now have our quote in there. And I could even come in, let's add a comma. We could do a placeholder of add your content here for the quote period. If you wanted that to be the initial text, you could actually change placeholder to initial and it will actually add that as the real text that gets pulled through. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that as placeholder. And then we want to add a citation in. So we're going to take this quote section here and add a comma to the very end to close that out, but say that there's more and we're going to add in citation. And this we're going to open up a bracket on and we're going to say type is instead of a text area, let's just do text because it can be smaller and you'll notice that's coming together right over here. We'll add a comma after text. We'll give this the label of citation, add a comma, and maybe we want the placeholder to be something like name. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now we can close out of our parameters and our element manager there, and we can begin adding things in here. So let's say this is a quote of epic proportions and a name. We'll call this Billy Bob, right? Now it's not doing anything yet. Let's add a couple of those. Now, to begin pulling this into our slides here, let's click on our one slide that we have active. We're going to go into customize and we're going to turn on our looper provider, our dynamic content. We're going to come in here and we need to remember what the name of our group was. So what was that? Well, let's jump back into the inline slider here, go into our parameters and take a look at this here. The group is slider items. So we can copy that to our clipboard, come back to the slide, go into customize and right here we are going to say that we want to loop over some dynamic content. The dynamic content is a parameter and the parameter that we want to loop over is the group slider items and then we'll end our double curly brackets. Then we're going to say we want to consume that and immediately you'll notice that something is starting to happen, but it's not consuming the right content. So now we're going to jump into slide one here into our text area and right here we can begin typing a dynamic content parameter. So we could actually say that we want this to take our uh, initial looper field and what was the field? Well, it was quote. So we'll do quote. Actually, I think it was a capital Q. So we'll do that here and we'll add that in. And now you'll notice the quotes are being pulled through. And maybe we also want our citation in here and you might do this a little bit differently, but we might do something like this here. Type in looper field and I believe it was citation with a capital C. We click plus and there we have the names associated with them as well. So we have Billy Bob, Susie Sue, Polly Paul and Jackie Jack. And if we wanted to, to add to this even further, we can come into that parent element here. We can click on add another item, something else and someone's name. And you'll notice that's all working. So I think this is ready to go. So now let's export this as a component to use on our site. And there's two ways that we can go about doing this. We can export it as a standard component here without prefab selected, which basically means that the structure is set, but any of these existing items that we have in here are not going to be carried over. So let's take a look at how this would work. I'm going to come over to our home page here and now we want to add in our testimonial slider. So we'll scroll down to that area that we wanted to include it in. We'll go into our elements here and we'll type in slider. We'll grab our component slider here. We'll drag this out and we'll drop it. And it doesn't look like much happens, but on the left hand side here, you'll notice that we have our slides and we can begin adding slides here, names here. And we could take this, we could close it up and we could duplicate it a few times here. And you'll notice things are working nicely. But what if these were testimonials that we wanted to keep using throughout the site and sort of have our baseline of four testimonials? Well, we'd simply come back over to our component here that we exported. We want to click on the parent component, which is this here. We're going to come into our manage element and we're simply going to select prefab as an additional setting to our components. Now, when I save this component and I jump back over to the home page, it won't update any data in the existing components that are already there. But what it will do is allow me to have a baseline. Now, when I grab these slider components where it pulls through all of the ones from the composed component. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I thought the benefit of a component was being able to make global changes and you are correct. Parameters are instance based. So that means when you have parameters, you can change those on a use by use basis. So I could duplicate this slide. I can change how many slides are in this one. Let's make it just two slides in this one here. And I think that's looking pretty good. But let's say we do want to make a global change. Well, we can do that too. We can come into our components library here. 
we can click on our slider. And instead of making a change here in parameters, we're going to go into the primary or change specifically what we want to change. In this case, I think all of our slides should be black and all of our text should be white. So I'm going to set that here and save it. Now you'll notice I made this change to the text and to the slide, which are not part of what we're controlling here at the parameter level. So when I jump back to our home screen here, our parameters have stayed intact on an instance by instance basis. Notice we still have two here and we have five here, but the global colors have changed on those slides anywhere we have used this throughout our site. Now, I'm only using this on the slider element, but just think about the possibilities. You could use this on any repetitive element anywhere, create a nice, easy management pane here and ripple that through your design. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building.